of hosts. And that, that's the promise of the Lord, and it's going to fulfill it in Jesus' name. Check up your Bible. I'm not sure you're going to find any other place where God said, do this, and I will do this. Prove me, test me, and examine me. And you do that, and I'm going to surprise you. If you will follow the Lord this year wholeheartedly, in all you see the Lord is revealing to us, it will surprise you with miracles. It will overload you with miracles. Prove me here with, if I will not open the windows of heaven and, and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to receive it. That is, you'll not have enough room to receive. And uh, let me look at some few things here. Number one, uh, for it says, uh, this is faithfulness rewarded. Faithfulness rewarded. Look at it in verse 10. It says, prove me now if I will not open the windows of heaven. That is, if you are faithful, I'm going to reward that faithfulness. Number one, faithfulness rewarded. Number two, fullness received. Fullness received. Look at that in verse 10. It says, I'll pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. You receive a fullness. There will not be enough a room to receive that. Number one, it's faithfulness rewarded. Number two, it's fullness received. Number three, false rebuke. False rebuke. Look at verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. All your foes, all your enemies, the Lord will say, don't come near here. Stand clear. This one is a precious child of God. And the business and the work of your hand is so protected and precious that it says, I will rebuke the devourers for your sake. The false rebuke. Number four. Fruitfulness regain. Fruitfulness regain. Because it says in verse 11, And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. All the destruction of the past, there will be a restoration to your business. A restoration to the work of your hand. Because it says there is fruitfulness regain. Number five, fertility restored. Fertility restored. It says neither shall your vine cast they cast, uh, cast her fruit before the time. It says fertility will be restored. And then number six, favor recognized. The favor of God upon you will be recognized because it says in verse 12, and all nations shall call you blessed. It says, if you will do what I'm telling you, and you will bring all the tithes into the storehouse, it says the favor of you, the favor of God will be recognized. And then number seven, the future reassured. The future reassured. Because it says, for you shall be a delightsome land, says the Lord of hosts. I come back to verse 10. It says in verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. That, that, that there, may be, there may be meat in mine house. And put me now here with, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Look up here. There are some people that uh, will tell you, if you listen to them, thank God we don't listen to false prophets. I said we don't listen to false teachers. You're not listening to them in Jesus' name. Oh, they will say that uh, uh, the law is, uh, is the law of Moses that, uh, you know, spoke about tithes and offering. There's nothing like that anymore. That, you know, whatever you want to give, if you have a hundred naira, you want to give only one cover, they say that's your, that's your decision. If you have a hundred naira, you want to give a ninety naira, and they say that's your decision. If you have a thousand dollars, you want to give only one dollar to the Lord, that's your decision. And if you decide to give uh, 980, of the 1,000 to the they say that's your decision. They say God doesn't uh, talk about, uh, you know, tithes and offering. Only, Mo only Moses spoke about it. I want to tell you that Abraham commenced it. Abraham commenced it. And Jacob continued it. Now, Moses commanded it. That's 400 years after Abraham had commenced it. And Christ commended it. And none can cancel it. Number one, Abraham commenced it. It started from the time of Abraham. Number two, Jacob continued it. And number three, Moses now commanded it in the law. And number four, Christ commanded it. 
And number five, none can cancel. Let, let's come to the first time types and offering uh, was mentioned. We're looking at Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14. And here we're reading from verse 18. Uh, Abraham had gone to the battlefield and God had given him the victory. And then a great personality met him. His name Melchizedek. And Melchizedek, we're told in Hebrews chapter 7, is like unto the very Son of God. And look at this in uh, Genesis chapter 14. And we're reading from verse 18. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem. That word Salem means peace. Uh, when in the Hebrew people say shalom, you know, in their language later, and that is peace. The king of peace, that, that's the king of shalom. And the king of, uh, that's Melchizedek. And he brought bread and wine. And do you remember what Jesus said? This is my body, which is broken for you. That's the bread. And then he brought the cup and he said, This is my blood, which is shed for you. He says, Drink ye all of it. And every time you do this, you do that in remembrance of me. That's what Melchizedek, the one that is made after the similitude of uh, you know, the Son of God, that's what he brought to Abraham. And then gave him bread and wine. And he was the priest of the Most High, Jesus Christ is our high priest and he blessed him and he and, and said blessed be Abraham of the most high God the possessor of heaven and earth listen to this and blessed blessed be the most high God which has delivered thine enemies into thine hand and he Abraham gave him tithes of all Moses was not born yet this is not the law this is the time of Abraham. And it says, we who are born again now, we have the seed of Abraham. And as Abraham did, and we're walking in the footsteps of Abraham, that's why you're not bringing your tithes. You're not giving the tithes to man. You're giving to Melchizedek. You're giving to the Lord Jesus Christ, who has sacrificed, who gave you his body, and who shed his blood for you. He gave you the bread and the wine. And you say, in recognition of what you've done for me, here is one tithe of everything I have, and you give unto the Lord. Abraham commenced it. Jacob continued it. We're looking at Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. And I'm reading here from verse 20. Genesis 20, uh, chapter 28, verse 20. And Jacob uh, vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in, the, in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and uh, raiment to put on. Stop there for a moment. Look at the prayer of Jacob here. If the Lord will, if God will be with me, what did Jesus say? I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you till the end of the world. That's that part of the request of uh, Jacob, which is the request the Lord has answered for you. And will keep me in this way that I go. What did Jesus say when I was praying? He says, Holy Father, keep them from the evil. He said, I'm not praying that you'll take them out of the world, but that you will keep them. He's keeping us. And then he says, I will give them, will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on. What did Jesus say? Seek ye for the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all you see that the Gentiles are seeking, I will, will be added unto you. Then he said, if you do that, this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be, shall be God's house and of all that thou shalt give me. Think about this. Of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the taste unto thee. Moses had not arrived. Moses did not teach Jacob this. But you see, Abraham commenced it and Jacob continued it. It was later that that uh, one came talking about uh, talking about uh, Jacob and uh, talking about uh, the tithes. And now when you come to the New Testament, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, uh, I'm reading from verse 1. You know, as you open up and you give to the Lord, the Lord will give unto you without measure, beyond measure. And this year will be your year of breakthrough in Jesus' name. 
Look at First Corinthians chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, now concerning the collections uh, for the saints, uh, as I have given order uh, to the churches of Galicia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week, which is the first day of the week. Today. Isn't it? Upon the first day of the week, Sunday, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him. You understand that language? That's the language of uh, the accountant. As God has uh, prospered him. That's the proportion. What's proportion? That's percentage. What's the least percentage? Ten percent. That is one tenth, one over ten, or ten over hundred. Ten percent of what you've got. That's the proportion. As God has prospered him, that there be no gathering when I come. What's that, what does that mean? That means that when there's a need, now we want to do this in the church of God. We want to preach. We want to transmit, uh, you know, the message of the kingdom to all the people that need to hear. We want to build a local church. We want to build a constant church. We want to pay the people that have given their whole life uh, to serving the Lord because they're not doing any other work. And this is the only way they can receive uh, you know, remuneration and uh, the pay for their service, a little pay that uh, they'll be able to maintain themselves and their families so that they will not be making announcements who are going to gather together for a special uh, meeting on a Wednesday on a Friday. We cannot pay our workers. We cannot do this. No, it says on the first day of the week as we gather together like this let everyone lay each by store. That means before you come to church on Saturday and you, you, you read your Sunday scripture and you prepare and you read your Bible and you put your hymn book aside by the way. I want to talk to the parents that you know the parents you're not buying hymn books for your children. And when we're singing, our youths, they don't have any hymn book uh, because we're seeing that once we've bought the Bible, we've done everything. No, your child must have the hymn book, the youths must have the hymn book, and the fathers and the mothers must have the hymn book. And then as we're coming to the Lord, uh, you know, sometimes uh, when we say now, raise up your offering, I will look in the youth's direction. We know they are not working, but you are training them. You are bringing them up. Before on Saturday, this is what you are going to contribute in the church. This is what you are going to give. And then father will have his own. Mother will have his own. It says on that day that there be no gathering when I come. And it says when I come, and eh, whatsoever ye shall approve by your letters. Them will I say to bring your liberality to Jerusalem. You know what that means? It means, you know, there's a local church there, local church there, local church there. And then you all bring the ties. And then we we'll send it to the headquarters and your liberality. Now your liberality, if you have a hundred uh, naira and you give uh, one naira, are you liberal? Tell me now. Why is it when we talk about money, then you keep quiet? When I begin to talk, I say, okay, no money, no money. Now, miracle. You say, praise the Lord, pastor. And then you say, amen. Uh-huh, miracle will come. Now we're talking about money. Give me a good amen. amen. And so, liberality. When you have, a, you know, the least you can do is the tithes and the offering. To be liberal. In fact, you go beyond one-tenth. You go beyond 10%. That's why it says tithes. That's one-tenth. And offering. The offering that is added to that. That's your liberality. And you know, the more you give to the Lord, this year you are going to begin a new style of giving. A new approach of giving. And I'm seeing the riches and prosperity upon your life already. You know, all the canker worms and the caterpillars, the Lord will rebuke everything. You will not spend your money on sickness. Give the money to God. You'll not have to go and give it in the hospital. Give your money to God. You'll not have to go and give it to the strangers. Because and what you give, the Lord will repay you. And the Lord will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. You know, some of these uh, teachers, they tell us that Jesus never spoke about tithes and offering. Uh -uh. They have not read their Bible very well. Matthew chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. It tells us in verse 23. It says over here, Matthew 23 and verse 23. It says, Won't you scribes some Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithes of mint, and anise and cumin 
and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. And you know what the Lord is saying here? The uh, Pharisees, they were meticulous about paying their tithes. But righteousness, uh-uh. Salvation, uh -uh. sanctification, no, no. Love of God, no, no. Helping other people, no, no. Helping the one that was going from Jerusalem to Jericho and then was uh, left up dead by the robbers. They will not take care of that person, only tithes and offering. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is let there be salvation. Let there be sanctification. Let there be Holy Ghost baptism. Let there be evangelism. Let there be helping the poor. Let there be caring for the widows. Let there be caring for the fatherless. And let there be your tithes and offering. I'm going to read that again. Now you understand better. Won't to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay the tithes of a mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. Listen to this. And uh, it says, and, and judgment and mercy and faith, the omitted mercy and faith and justice, these ought she to have done. What's that? The tithes are doing that's all right. That's all right. These ought she to have done and not to have left the other undone. What he, what he condemned them for is that they left mercy, they left faith, they left the love of God, and they left the caring for the poor, and they only concentrate on tithes and offering. He said, balance everything together. These such it to have done, you should pay your tithe, and not only tithe, tithe and offering, and be liberal. And if you are liberal, God will be liberal upon your life. And this year, you are going to receive greater in the hand of the Lord in Jesus' name. He'll wipe your tears away. He will, he will change everything that needs any change in your life, in your surrounding, in Jesus' name. Come back to Malachi. I'm reading from chapter 3. Come back to Malachi chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 10. It says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Bring ye, what was the next word? Bring ye, what's the next word there? Tell me out loud. All, all the tithes. You know, the people that, you know, will say, now raise up your tithes and offering. And they don't make any calculation. Tithe is one tenth. Every month, if you're a salary earner, you'll calculate, you say, this is one tenth. If, uh, you know, you earn income in another way, you calculate this is one-tenth. And it says you bring all the tithes. And if you bring all the tithes, no wonder all the blessings you ought to get in the past, you were not getting. But this year, you'll get everything. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. And let your children have their contribution. The wife must have her contribution. The husband has his contribution. Everyone is contribution. Because, you know, if uh, the blessing is going to pour on everyone, everyone must have something they're expecting. I have done the will of God. I brought my tithes. I brought my offering. I'm expecting this. And God will not be debtor to anybody. He will, he will give you what he said he'll give you. I thought you'll say Amen. amen. Prove me and prove me now. Here we, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven. Those windows are opening. And pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. This church will not be oppressed by any devourer. And every work of your hand, it will bless and preserve. And ye shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, and the fruit of your womb, and the fruit of your service, and the fruit of your labor. Neither shall your vine cast a fruit before the vine.